Why did you give up painting to go into cinema? Uh, well, the camera's easier to uh, work. How do you mean easier? You just have to turn on the button. Well, Andy had a very keen sense of branding because he was in advertising. So at some point in his life, he decided that he was going to be an artist and was going to brand himself. And that brand needed a look and a concept and an attitude. And part of his persona was that incoherent, non-committal, quiet, I call him the, uh, the passive participant. I'm living up the street. I'm now 11 years old and I've been surfing for a couple years. My older brother and sister both had surfboards. I didn't have a surfboard yet. Andy Warhol came here to um, film his movie, San Diego Surf. He was just living two blocks away. And I used to see them around town. That didn't really mean much. I just thought that he was like, you know, the freak show. But I mean, at that time, you know, everybody was a freak. And La Jolla was a sleepy little town. But at that time, you know, um, baby boomers were everywhere. On every street there was kids. That was the summer of love. And I was too young to realize what was going on. And it was Vietnam, so it was scary times. I was really into surfing. We'd always go to the beach almost every day. My mom would pack a lunch and we'd have a picnic at the beach. I made my first surfboard when I was 13, right up the street in our parents' garage. and. Then I really started getting into surfboards and learning about other manufacturers and how boards were made. I'm extremely interested in finding Just a new totally to enamored and in love with the idea of making surfboards. So I'm in college, I'm studying fine art at San Diego State University and Andy Warhol, we're learning about him all the time. So now I'm very um, cognizant of his fame and reputation and his work. And he was my idol. And he was one of those people that you know, on my bucket list that I wanted to meet. So Carl Ekstrom um, is one of my mentors and friends, and he is the inventor of the asymmetrical tail and uh, the designer. He knew all about Andy Warhol, you know, they were similar ages, and he was way more sophisticated. I was just a little kid at the time. And Andy bought two boards from him and uh, for the movie as props. And Andy... Uh, and he loved surfboards. He thought that they were truly art. In, sometime in the early 80s, I was invited to go to New York with a friend, John Batonti, and his good friend, Gary Binko, lived on 42nd Avenue. And um, so we just show up, we hang out, and, and Gary is studying um, film at NYU. It was the 80s, it was fun, we were young, we were partying in New York. And Gary's brother was the head of the uh, um, marketing and advertising for the Playboy Club. So they were opening a new Playboy Club in Midtown. And we got invited to go and to the opening. A little bit of backstory, Carl Ekstrom, I told him I was going to New York and he goes, Tim, if you run into Andy, tell him I said hi. We pull up to the opening of the Playboy Club in this white silver cloud limo. <laughs> and um, there's, Hugh Hefner and his wife. And there's there's Warhol standing with five beautiful tall models. And he's just standing there, you know, just looking around. My my friends are just going, well, there's Andy, just go talk to him. And I just, I was too shy, I didn't want to go. But then they dared me, and you're gonna dare me, I'm gonna go. So there he's standing all by himself with these models. And I walk up to him and I said, hello, I'm Tim Bissell, and we have a mutual friend, Carl Ekstrom. And then the, it, he just opened up and started talking to me and he wanted to know how our, Carl was doing and how was La Jolla and, um, and then I gave him my business card and I'll never forget it had a little uh, silhouette of this, this uh, man holding a briefcase and he, he looked at it and kept looking at it. It was like on a salmon colored paper that we had printed and he goes, I like that card. And sampling, it's basically what sampling is, you'll take an old beat or an old uh, lyric and match it with something new, which they didn't have technology at the time to do that, then it just creates something new and magical. Andy appropriated all those images, and those images 
have been reappropriated by me. So it's, uh, it's, it's non-consensual collaboration, but it all works out in the end. How do you envision your role in the surfing film? Oh, in the surfing film, I wrote, you know, yesterday we, we shot some of the scenes, um, and uh, I, I stated the fact that I was uh, extremely, I, I'm extremely interested in finding a, a new way to live, and I think the surfing could possibly be the answer. That's why I'm seeking out to find. And they're more involved in, into the ocean, and, and just, just the waves, the waves meaning the wave being everything, and uh, I feel that that might, it has, a, it has cut my interest, and in the movie that's exactly what I'm seeking out, I'm seeking out a way to, um, to live.